Hey guys, here's a list of 10 things I wish I knew before going into engineering school. Practice exams and assignments are the best way to prepare for tests. In engineering, the professors usually make the test questions similar to assignment questions and old exam questions. I found that by redoing questions over and over, I would start to recognize patterns and similarities in the problems. The more problems I did, the easier it was to memorize the steps involved with the different kinds of problems. The key is to do as many problems as possible and to really drill the procedures for solving them into your head. It really helps if you can get old exams from an exam bank or from students who have taken the course before. GPA isn't everything and extracurricular activities can compensate for a lower GPA. In my first year of engineering, I was completely obsessed with the idea of achieving a perfect grade. I tried so hard to get a 4.0 that I wasn't really doing anything outside of studying and going to the gym. In my second year of engineering, I let my GPA drop a bit and started to get more involved with volunteer activities and personal projects. I found that employers actually cared more about the extra activities I was involved with and they also gave me lots of things to talk about in interviews. Consistency is the key to reducing stress. In particular, I'm referring to sleeping and studying. It wasn't until my senior year that I fully realized the importance and power of having a consistent sleep and study schedule. I began to sleep at the same time each day and wake up at the same time each day. I also began to study at the same time each day for the same amount of hours. Eventually, my brain made these activities into a habit and I began to feel my stress lower drastically. Taking scheduled breaks for high density fun is important. I actually borrowed the term high density fun from Thomas Frank of College InfoGeek. Essentially, it means making time in your schedule to unwind and do something that is deeply fun. A deeply fun activity is something that makes you forget about the other stresses in your life. This is the opposite of low density fun. Low density fun is just superficial fun. It's either low quality fun or pseudo work type activities that make us feel like we're still being productive. An example of low density fun would be surfing Facebook, reading productivity articles, or reading articles on Buzzfeed. Examples of high density fun would be grabbing coffee with a friend, playing a new video game you've been wanting to play, or going out for dinner with a loved one. Don't believe someone when they say a semester or a course is easy. I've fallen for this trap a few times. Someone who's in the same program as me, but a year ahead of me tells me that my next semester will be easier than my current one. I end up entering the course or semester and are estimating it and not doing as well as I should have. The reality is, different people find different courses easier and harder. Some people get easier professors and some people get harder ones. In engineering, it's safer to assume that everything remains equally difficult and to never underestimate the difficulty of a course. Finals are a lot less stressful when you study early. This one's kind of common sense, but for lots of engineers, including myself, we forget this. We are so exhausted from our workload that when we finally get a few days where nothing is due, we decide to do nothing. It's much better to do small studying sessions instead of nothing to prepare for the exam that's coming in a week or two. This way, we don't have to sacrifice our sleeping schedules to prepare for exams. Going to a professor's office hours can save time on a difficult problem. Marking your professor's office hours on a calendar at the beginning of the semester can make your life a lot easier. If we start an assignment earlier, we can take the time to meet with our professors in their office when we encounter any problems. Before going to office hours, I used to struggle for hours on a problem until I realized there was just one simple concept that I wasn't understanding fully. If I went to my professor's office hours, I probably could have gotten help with the concept in 10 minutes or less. Time management is crucial in engineering school, so it's not worth wasting hours trying to figure out concepts that can be taught to you in minutes. However, you should have attempted the problem and have a few notes or questions prepared to ask your professor so they don't think you're just trying to get a free ride. Coffee is mostly unnecessary. In university, I developed a really bad caffeine addiction. At one point, I was drinking two to three large coffees a day. In my senior year, I started to sleep on a consistent schedule and found that I naturally have enough energy in the day to do all my work. I think we should listen to our bodies instead of suppressing the signals they send us, and when we're tired, we should just get some sleep. Drinking too much coffee will just mess with our natural rhythms and make us more stressed. Coffee is best used on days where we're not able to get enough sleep and need a quick fix. 
Finishing a degree a year or two later is not a big deal. Many engineering students are in a rush to complete their degrees in the shortest time possible. I'm not really sure what the motive is, but the truth is that employers really don't care if you complete your degree in four years or five years. Students that take less courses so that they can get a higher GPA and get involved with more extracurricular activities will actually be more competitive when applying for jobs. Don't be worried about taking less courses unless, of course, the reasons are financial. It may pay off by making you more competitive as an employee in the end for a job that you really want. Summarizing key points of an assignment after completing it makes studying for finals a lot easier. After spending hours on completing assignments, I was always exhausted. I just wanted to put it away and get it handed in the next day. Unfortunately, I usually forgot all the important formulas and tricks in the assignment by the time finals came around and had to relearn them. By taking 15 to 30 minutes after each assignment to summarize the key points and learnings, I found that studying for finals became a lot easier. I could just review my summary sheets. Adding important formulas from an assignment onto a formula sheet will end up saving you a lot of time in the future. Those are 10 things that I wish I knew going into engineering school. In the comments below, feel free to let me know things you wish you knew going into engineering school. If you're about to enter engineering, what are some things you would like to know? Finally, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks guys, and see you next time.